alto players, remember we're using the key of C. Soprano and tenor players, we are using the key of F, F major. And so for the sake of time, I'm going to speak in numbers a lot of times, or I may just grab the saxophone, the other saxophones to um, make sure that we're on the same page. Because the whole thing that we're trying to do in this video is learn principles to help us make those baby steps to start improvising. And so what we want to do is use what we have learned already. So um, one thing that I want to do right now is I want to start showing you some simple ideas with, with one of my tracks, my smooth jazz tracks. The first thing I want to do is we're in the key of we're in the key of C. The idea that I want to show you in the key of C right now, I want you to keep two things in mind. I'm going to walk up from the first note to the second note to the third note. I'm going to then play the second, the third note again. So I'm going to play the third note two times, like such. And of course, I'm adding vibrato and all that. Um, but that's basically what I'm doing. I'm using the first three notes of the scale. Now, principle number one, you can use your scalar ideas, like literally try to make the major scales sing. And right now, I started on the first note of trying to make it sing. What I tried to do was put a period on it, as I call it, which means resolve your idea. No one likes run on sentences. Everybody likes for you to make complete sentences that they can understand and follow. So I'm walked up from the first note to the second note to the third note. And then to resolve it, I played the third note again. Now, two things I want to think I want you to think about as we start. Your first and your third note, when things are major sounding, are two good places to end ideas on. Demonstration time. Do it again. I'm going to do it slower this time. I just improvised. You can begin to improvise, improvise that simple. You have to have a starting point. And so being that you know your major scales, you can play around with these major scales, right? <laughs> as simple as I used three notes and I decided that I was going to resolve, I was going to resolve on my third note. And so I played it again. Now, what happens? I told you about the first and the third note. What happens if I do the same idea, but this time I decide that after I play that E the second time that I'm going to resolve. I'm not going to let it be my period, but I'm going to let the first note, which is C for me, let that be my period. What happens when we do that? Well, let's see. See how that works? I took what I already knew and I began to experiment. Now, another thing you can do is you can experiment with different timings of where to put the same thing. So this time we're going to do it together. I'm going to count and I want you to play it with me so you can feel what it feels like. Again, it's C, D, E, E. And what we're doing is we're scooping that second E. Um, I started going tongue and like. That makes you sound like you're reading music a little bit in smooth jazz. There's times for tonguing. Tongues are all, tonguing a lot of times for me is the thing I use when I want to accent something or I want to make something move a little fast. So a lot of times I'm slurring or I'm lightly tonguing. And so if you, for those of you who don't know what tonguing means, tonguing is where you take the tip of your tongue and you're kind of hitting the, the back part of the, the bottom part of the reed, like slightly to get an effect, like. <laughs> versus. <laughs> you see, it sounds funny trying to slur something that fast. So tongue is another two. All right, so let's do it together. The first thing again. 
One, two, three, four, and hold it. Let's do a three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do it again. One, two, three again. One, two, last time. Now this time, we're gonna do the same thing with some, what we're gonna resolve on C this time. So this is how I'm gonna do it. One, two, three. Do it again. Now you do it with me. Two, three. Let's talk about small things that I'm doing to get a little bit more soul out of it, to get a little bit. I am playing with slurs, but sometimes I like to add a little accent, so I might tongue lightly in the first note. So I, I slightly tongue the first note, slur the D, and then I am doing that, the scoops or the bending of the notes for those two E's. Yeah. Then I might tongue lightly that C. Or I could slur it. But one thing you can notice is that when I'm hitting C, I am keeping my tone straight, and then I'm adding vibrato. So if you have questions about vibrato, go back to the last course because we did an extensive you know, study on how to do that. So any vibrato you like but that's what I'm choosing to use but I'm, I'm trying to expose to you small things that are happening that's making it sound different because if I didn't do those small things it would sound like this one two three now that's not bad but doesn't this sound better Another thing I'm doing is a thing called dynamics. I'm not blasting. You know, sometimes saxophone players, we kill stuff. Singers don't blast all the time. Good singers know when to take soft and, and pull you in with their dynamics and their vibrato and their bending of notes. So I could pull you in like this. You know, I could do different things with, with my vibrato and my, and when I say dynamics, my loudness, my softness, all those things together. So you got to try to feel it some more so you can feel, hmm, I should be soft. Hmm, I should be, I should be loud. And those things can add up to bring about a lot more soul in your playing than what you, than what you might expect. Okay, so now let's work on that, that, that first, second, third note. Back down to the first no idea. Let's do it together. One, two, three. And sometimes I might come to see a little bit faster because I'm just doing it how it feels. Forgive me if we're not completely on that. I want you to get the ideas. The ideas are more important. So here we go. We're going to do it over and over again. I'll wait for this part. Now this time, 
we're going to build upon the same idea to create something more. So um, it's almost like a call and answer. Our first line was like the call. And then we could take the same thing that we did by resolving to another note and play it again as the answer to that call. So da 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 what's your reply? Da 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 uh. So it's essentially the same thing, but that one note makes it different. So you don't have to use 50 notes to create something nice. You can take what you know. If all you know is a major scale, then this is how you can begin to make melodies with the major scale. The major scale are already a collection of notes that sound good together. So if you can play any of these collection of notes together and resolve them, you're going to start to make some sense. It's going to start being like a baby starting to put together these words and making small sentences. So that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to make small sentences. We're trying to begin to talk a little bit. So now I'm going to demonstrate putting the two ideas together. And I want you to follow me and, and do it as well. Two, three, idea one. One, two, three, next one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's take that little bit of idea now. Let's change the timing of it. So we can alter something as simple as how long we put a distance between those two. And we can make a bigger sentence or we can make a, a different kind of idea off of something that we've already saw that work, right? So let me give you give you an example. One. I didn't put three beats in between the ideas. I just did one beat. So I went one, two, three. One, two, three, three, as in the notes that we're using on your scale. So one, two, three, three, rest, one, two, that rest was one beat, one, two, three, one. I didn't hold the, the third note out as long. So you can make small changes to the same idea. <laughs> is, it, is the light bulb coming on? So, so improviser is not just for the special or the elite. It's for you. You can take the simple things, again, that you already know and experiment. Try to feel in your heart what to play. And you can make small manipulations in timing. You can make small manipulations in how you resolve the idea to come up with beautiful melodies. So try this one with me now. We're going to do it together. First idea. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's do that again. One, two, three. Number one. Second line. One, two, three. Again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now this time, get ready to only do one beat in between. So this time we're going to do one beat in between and we're going to cut the second E off just a little bit. One, two, three. One. One, two, three. 
one. So I hope you're getting it. I hope you're getting it. So now let's let's do something different. Let's do something a little different now. So um, we took the first three notes and we made an idea off off of it. Now you know we went over modes in the last the last course, right? So what happens if we use the second mode or the second degree? So that means that our our that means we would be going a set of one, two, three. We'll be going two, three, four. I don't even know if this is going to work, but this is what I'm talking about. Experiment and see. And so we're going to still resolve on our third note. So we're going to go two, three, four, four, three. All right. And let's do it the same way we did first idea different notes same timing so we it should sound like this the first one was that's what should be happening so let's just try that again one two three Let's see what it sounds like against the music. Here we go. One, two, three. One, let's do it again. Two, three. One, two, three. Do it again. So now let's test the theory on how well these things work. I'm going to play without necessarily trying to do them in any particular way. I'm going to play the first idea. And this time I'm going to use soprano. I'm going to play the, the one, two, three, three. And then I'm going to do the one, two, three, three, one. And then I'm going to do the the two, three, four, four, three. All we're doing is playing from different positions of the, of the scale. Now, we didn't use the whole modes. For some of you who might be scratching your head and saying, well, that wasn't the whole mode. What we did is we used the first three notes of a mode. So I used the first three notes of mode number one, the degree number one. And then I, and I resolved. I then use the first three notes of mode number two, and I resolved, and I played with it. I experimented with it to see what it would give me. You see how easy this can be, y'all? And then you're going to find things that you like, and you're going to begin to build ideas that you know you can use easily. So let's try this out. added a little extra note but I still only use notes that we already use when I did that there's other little small things you can do to bring more life to your ideas like repeating the same note these are, and or sometimes playing with a note just above it like I did
So that was, that kind of slipped out. But um, that's what was going on with that. That's what was going on with that. So right now, we're only resolving with, with the first note, and we've been resolving with the third note. Okay, now, let's experiment some more. Let's experiment with, um, you know what, I'm going to stay with this. I'm going to grab the tenor. Same key as this alto. I'm trying to spread the love of letting everybody see different saxophones today. So I don't have to do different videos for each one of these things. What's the third? What's in the key of F? What's the third mode? So it's, we start on A. So we're gonna do the first three notes of A in, the, in that third mode, which is gonna be A, B flat, C. All right. And this time I'm gonna resolve on the one. That's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna take the same idea that we already built. So for those of you on alto saxophone. You are sure third third note degree of, of C C D E. So you're gonna be going E F G G C. Let's see what happens. One, two, three. Now this time I'm gonna resolve on the three. Okay, same idea. Did you see that I was able to make two distinct statements off of the same idea? I'm going to beat this point the whole lesson. Soloing does not have to be a lot of notes or complicated. It can be simple ideas. If you can begin to make these simple statements, you're going to get better at putting the statements together to make a more interesting solo. All right, so now I'm going to put it to play into this music and I want you to be to try it with me. Here we go. Number one, two, three. Three, four, five, five, one, two, three. One more time. One. Two, three. And now we're going to end on the three. I'm going to wait for the music because it, it won't seem right while the music is going down. <laughs> now, one, two, three. Three, four, five, five, three. One, two, three. Do it again. One, two, three. Now, here's the next step I want you to take. So we learned from the first degree we had two ways of making lines and resolving. We went to the second degree and we resolved on the third. So we have three ideas now. Three ideas we built up off of a scale. We built the ideas completely off your major scale, and we've resolved on the one and the three. Can you resolve on other notes? Yes. But one and three, at this point, are very safe. So we're going to stick with the safe for, for, for making it very practical for you to learn. Okay. So then we went to the third degree, and we went three, four, five, five, and we would come down on the one. And then we decided to take the same idea and, and come down on the third note. So now if I'm talking too fast, rewind because I want to give you more information, okay? So now this time, which is harder to do because I'm having to think instead of feel and play, I'm going to try to be creative with those ideas. Um, do I have to play them in order? No, well, I want to prove the point that you can make, you can take statements that you've come up with and you can learn how to make sentences. So improv improvisation, improvising is taking these 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 statements and putting them together to make 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 paragraphs and make longer sentences or sometimes use space. Space is also a part of making things up. So let, let me let me see what happens.
Wasn't the longest solo. I tried to use different timing. I tried to maybe repeat ideas multiple times. I tried to not do them in the same order. And I was able to come up with something. Did I have to make it fast? No. But I wanted to do it differently so you could see that, you know, that's me trying to come up with something where I'm limiting myself to only certain ideas and a certain time. What happens when you take all the modes through this and you experiment and you say, well, maybe I don't want to use the first three notes. Maybe I want to use the first four notes. And I want to resolve on a third note. Well, that just gave me another line. You see where this can go? This can go, this can take you to a lot of places and, it, and you will know what you're doing and it won't be complicated. So as far as scalar ideas or major scale ideas, this is the th type of things I want you to start working with to, um, to get this to the next place of, of, of imp improvising. So experiment. Experiment with the whole scale and resolve it to the three. Experiment to the sixth, to the seventh degree. Just experiment, experiment. Make statements. Write some of these statements down. And um, try, to put them up, try to put them to the track. See what happens. You, don't, you won't learn if you're always scared to try to fly. So part of this lesson is to kick you out the nest. Put you out there. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Making mistakes, falling out of the nest makes you start flapping harder so you can get some wind under your wings so you can fly because you don't want to die. <laughs> so I hope this, this was the first good push to get you out of the nest. Now the next video, we're going to move into how can we do some of the same things with our major pentatonic scale.